Soon all of us will have special names. Names designed to cause the cathode ray tube to resonate. Of course, Oblivion is not the name I was born with. That's my television name. Suppose, for example, there were some kind of signal that could come through the television set that could make you out and kill your relatives, you know, just out of nowhere. I mean, just suppose that could happen. Is this still coming from Pittsburgh? It's like they were beaming it straight into us. Okay, come on, get out. I don't want you to see this. Huh? Come on, get out! I said I don't want you to see it! Get out! Ready? Action! Your television station offers its viewers everything from softcore pornography to hardcore violence. Well, it's, uh, it's a matter of economics, Rena. We're small. Um, it's very hard for me to say what video drama is about in a sentence because it's, I think it's totally misleading to say that it's a criticism of television or that it's a, you know, an, an extension of network or something like that. It's, it really is exploring what I've been doing all along, which is to see what happens when, when people go to extremes in trying to alter their total environment to the point where it comes back and starts to alter their, 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 their physical selves. David himself really sold me on this project. Uh, there was something about, he's so self-effacing in a way. He's a very gentle, kind of kind man. I always said to David, I said, you sure you write this stuff? I said, you know, you look like this guy with, you know, a beautiful wife, two beautiful children, you know, your little home, he races Ferraris, which is, I think, the clue, because, you know, underneath this civilized veneer, we have one of the strangest minds I think I've ever encountered. You know, I consider myself, a, you know, ideal bourgeois. You know, I, I just, the things that I'm concerned with in the films and the people that I'm dealing with in the film are, are, are fairly middle class in, their, in what they do and what they think and what they're trying to protect. David Cronenberg writes from his nightmares. He only writes at night. He doesn't write during the day. And I've, if, we, if we ever think about nightmares, the thing about them that's so horrifying is not that some terrible thing happens all of a sudden. It's that something is normal and I'm talking to you and all of a sudden my hand starts to explode or you know, turn green and, and you're talking, you know, in a nightmare it seems to be normal but it, there's something you sense is wrong and it's the emotional terror, the, the almost subliminal terror as opposed to a logical terror. What we were sort of looking for was something that would uh, take me out of the, the uh, sort of image that people had of me, um, you know, Blondie and, and being a singer and sort of being, you know, sort of this cute, popsy little, you know, character. Um, we did, however, want um, for the first film something like comedy, something that would be light and sort of charming and people would really love me. Um, so Nikki is not exactly that. What do you think, Nikki? Is it socially positive? Well, I think we live in overstimulated times. We crave stimulation for its own sake. We the thing to do is to not try to be a different character, but to uh, let the situation sort of uh, control control what's happening. When I was like really a little kid, um, I always said I wanted to be a movie star first because um, rock groups weren't didn't really exist. You know what Freud would have said about that dress? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been just, I've sort of been studying all my life. I've been observing and, you know, I've been a fan and wanting to do it all my life. Well, it's shaping up. Videodrome is really a strange film. And we have to do some pretty disgusting things in this movie. For example, we have, we're doing a makeup effect on a TV set. We have a, a like a change OTV that, that, that becomes flesh and grows veins and, and musculature and it moves and undulates and undulates and all kinds of horrible things happen to it. We've never done any, any effects quite like we're doing in video drama. I started doing monster makeups when I was about 10 years old. I was fascinated by horror films on TV and uh, started smearing grease paint on my face. And when I was about 13, I made my first mask. And I've been doing it ever since. We maybe should pump something from the eyes, too, as this is happening. Yeah. We have a lot of I can leave the tubes in on the side. very bizarre images, you know, cancer bursting through people's faces and slits developing on people's abdomens, and they're sticking their arms into it, and guns growing on people's hands. It's, it's very strange. I care enough, as a matter of fact, to, to give my viewers uh, a harmless outlet for their fantasies, their frustrations, 
And uh, personally, I feel like it's a socially positive act. Yeah, that would be good. Yes. As you know, it's such a, it's one of the most bizarre and fantastical scripts, I think, that I've ever read. Most people, the few people who've read it feel the same way. And uh, there's a tendency sometimes in lesser hands to make something like that, um, uh, to make characterization less important because you have so much, so much bizarreness uh, associated with the story itself. And uh, David, much to his credit, David Cronenberg, the director and writer of the, cr the creator of this whole vision, was very concerned with having it seem to be very realistic at first. And then s things start to happen organically and, and, and by osmosis almost to creep into the whole film. And he felt it was very important to have a kind of texture to Max as a character that would make you be so concerned with him that as all these other things start to overlay, you, you become caught unawares. I wouldn't call it an obsession. I love characters who are obsessed because they're so directed and they're so single-minded, which is something that is very hard to do in the real world because there, there are so many things going on. I love the character because I don't even know exactly who he is. I mean, he keeps creeping up in different ways inside me. I mean, I'll do things in scenes. I'll just say things out of nowhere, little ad-libs and stuff that this wonderful crew happens to catch, luckily enough. And, uh, and all of a sudden, it's a completely different... Um, different character than we thought we were going to have. I don't really have a message that I feel that the world must hear in order to be saved at all. So, uh, in that, to that extent, my films are entertainment in, a, in the fullest sense. I mean, I, I'd like people to entertain my films rather than my films to entertain them. To entertain the ideas in the film. And um, the fact that film audiences are fragmented and that there are people who will just not understand what I'm doing or not care to know what I'm doing, that's, to me that's inevitable, that's not a surprise at all. I, I personally get very offended when in the middle of a fiction film you see, uh, let's say, an animal slaughtered and it's for real. I, I find that very offensive because it's a whole different level of reality interjected into the middle of, of a fiction. And I think it's a very cheap way of getting an, you know, a response from an audience, because of course that kind of thing will always get a response. It gets a response from me, but not the right kind of response. But um, there are only wrong things in terms of what works for the context of a particular film. Uh, but in general, I'd say, no, there's nothing you, you shouldn't be able to show on film.